All right, let's see what you know about Moodle. I'm going to start with a quick quiz. Just five questions. Are you ready? Where did Moodle start? Australia, Japan, the United Kingdom. Lock in your answer. How many registered users? 5 million, 50 million, 150 million. How many registered Moodle sites? 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. How many registered countries? 30, 130, 230. And how many languages does Moodle support? 10, 100, 1,000. Well, how did you go? Kudos to you if you managed to get five from five. In any case, it's the perfect segue to the present day. Moodle is the world's most popular and loved learning management system. But you may be wondering, well, how did it get to where it is today and where is it going? Let me share with you the Moodle story. Let's start from the beginning. Well, back in the 1970s, a clever young kid by the name of Martin, Martin Duyamas, attended School of the Air in remote Western Australia. Australia is a vast continent and Martin's nearest school happened to be hundreds of kilometers away. The internet didn't exist and Martin attended what was known as School of the Air. That was schooling delivered to the home via radio wave. For Martin, it was a very early insight into distance learning. Fast forward to 1999, Martin begins creating the Moodle software as part of his PhD research project at Curtin University. And in 2001, he made his first forum post using the Moodle software. In the following year, he released Moodle as an open source software system. This is version one. And in the same year, in his own words, so you can see what I'm working on, Martin launched Moodle Tracker. This is a software bug tracking system. By 2004, the first international Moodle moots were being held in the United Kingdom and in Germany. And at this stage, there was only around about 1,000 registered Moodle sites. So Moodle as a project was very much in its infancy. In the following year, the Mojito established itself as the official Moodle moot beverage. Incidentally, that was at the Spanish Moodle moot. And in the following year, Moodle Docs was launched. This is Moodle's online help documentation site. By 2008, Moodle and Martin were receiving their first of many accolades to follow. This particular award was the, open, uh, the Google O'Reilly Open Source Award in the Education Enabler category. By 2010, Moodle, Moodle Core version 2 was released. And in the following year, Moodle Mobile App version 1. By 2013, Moodle HQ launched the Learn Moodle MOOC. This is a massive open online course for educators wanting to learn the basics about Moodle. By 2015, Moodle HQ had launched its low cost hosting service referred to as Moodle Cloud. In the same year, Moodle Mobile App version 2 was released and Moodle Core version 3 with a big focus on the user experience. We also said hello to Atto. This was Moodle's new HTML and text editor. 2016 was a milestone year for Moodle in many respects. Importantly, it achieved 100 million registered users. And every country in the world had a registered Moodle site. We also saw the launch of the Moodle Users Association. So their aim is to help drive the Moodle project. Members vote on projects to be developed by Moodle HQ and for inclusion in Moodle Core and naturally uh, member fees fund the development effort. In the same year, we said hello to Boost. This was Moodle's new default theme, modern, clean, web responsive. And as Leonardo da Vinci once said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Moodle Mobile App version 3 was released. 
and it was becoming a very good metaphor for the desktop experience. In fact, virtually all standard activities were now supported by the app. And HQ launched its branded Moodle mobile app service. So this was a commercial service where any organization could have its branding applied to the standard Moodle mobile app. And Moodle Desktop was launched. So the perfect solution for accessing Moodle courses via your desktop, laptop, or Microsoft Surface device. Some big news from Moodle in 2017 when they announced their investment partnership with our friends from Education for the Many. And this has enabled Moodle to accelerate its growth and certainly take things to a whole new level. Moodle also opened a new office in Barcelona, Spain. I don't know about you, but I am seeing this Spanish connection here with the new office, the Mojito, and in fact, even the, the mobile app development team situated there. So here we are back in the present day, 2019, we've got approximately 150 million registered users. Phenomenal. So where to from here? Well, Moodle HQ is focused on what it refers to as five key growth projects. So continuing to improve Moodle Core, Learn Moodle, Moodle Net, Moodle Foundation, and the expansion of Moodle services and partnership programs. So let me talk to each of those just quickly now. So firstly, improving Moodle Core. So we expect more of the same here, and this has been a fairly recent phenomenon, but we're going to see a continued focus on improved usability, simplicity, and accessibility within the Moodle Core product. So. Who doesn't want you know, improve, uh, an improved learner experience? Watch out for sector-specific improvements. So Moodle Workplace is a new version of the Moodle Core product that we, that we know and love. Expect to see this land at some stage this calendar year. Analytics-driven user assistance. So this has landed already. It's in its infancy, and you may be familiar with it as learning analytics. So the idea is helping educators to make better and more informed decisions about learning in a timely manner. Learn Moodle. This is Moodle's latest curriculum to learn to teach online, and it's referred to as the Moodle Educator Certification Program. In fact, the program is aligned with UNESCO's Digital Competencies Framework for Educators. Thirdly, Moodle Net. This is currently undergoing an extreme makeover and may eventually replace what we now know as Moodle.org. So MoodleNet is aiming to become a well-designed social media platform for educators. Fourthly, the Moodle Foundation. This will be launched by Moodle HQ in Europe, possibly Brussels, and its focus will be on driving research into open source initiatives. And lastly, look out for the further expansion of Moodle services and partnership programs. Moodle, it started as one man's vision, Martin. He planted a seed and we all nurtured it and helped it grow. The Moodle project highlights the great potential of humanity. Moodle, empowering educators to improve our world. How are you going to use Moodle to improve our world? Thank you.